In this video, I'm going to show you some exercises into how to develop traditional grip. If you're brand new to traditional grip, please watch my other video where I give an introduction and the basics on how to hold the sticks. But we're going to jump into it right now in exercises, how to develop speed and control and comfort in using traditional grip. So these are exercises that I learned from master teachers like Ed Sof, like my teacher Chris Conrad in Portland, people like Jeff Hamilton, um, Jim Chapin, etc. So the first thing you want to do, this first exercise, is going to be finger engagement. And so what it is, I call it finger push-ups. And what you're doing is you're starting to get your fingers engaged so that you're not playing with a claw or just a permanent hold on the sticks. So what I'm doing is, you can see right here, I'm just dropping my fingers and pushing them back up so they are finger push-ups. So what this does is these two fingers help push it down. These two are getting out of the way. And then when I go up, these two are going up. It's just like this. It's like you're doing that without the stick. Ed Self used to say it's like waving hello to yourself. So that's really what you're doing. You're moving your fingers up and down. So you do that as you hold the stick. As you can hear, there's actually movement. The stick is moving. It's not tight. So what this does is you start to get your fingers involved so you can start to have some finger control. When you're playing, there are times when your fingers are going to be doing most of the control or they're going to be adding to it. The bottom fingers are going to help spring that up. So I do this away from the drum. I used to sit in math class with a pencil and practice doing that. But you can do this away from the drum. You can literally air drum this way. And you can practice getting that stick to bounce up that way. You can also do it on the drum and practice a rebound stroke. Now, if when you do this, if the stick comes in, you don't want to do that because that means you're pushing it forward. This is just moving the fingers down so the stick is going up and down in the same trajectory as it was. Exercise number one, finger push-ups. So here is exercise number two. It's really important that you have control with your thumb. The thumb is really where the fulcrum is. First of all, you want to make sure that you are holding the stick in the crook of your thumb at the right point, the balance point of the stick. The balance point is where the stick is going to ba uh, balance and bounce the easiest. And you can figure that out by dribbling the stick. If by holding the stick, you're able to bounce it like that, that's your balance point. If you're holding it too far back, there's too much top weight, it's not going to bounce. If you're holding it too far forward, it's too balanced, there's not going to be enough weight to even bring it down. So finding that perfect point is the balance point. I play Vic First sticks, and for Vic First, where the flag is, is almost always the perfect balance point. But you can figure out, just try that different places on your stick. You will find that if you're not holding it there, it could be a lot more difficult to get some good rolls and controls using traditional grip. So after you have found the perfect balance point, what you're going to do is you're going to practice thumb control. So this is where you're going to manipulate the stick using only the thumb and no other motion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm not using my wrist. I'm going to move my thumb forward and back like that. And when I do that, the stick is going to go up and down. So I'm going to practice bouncing. Just using thumb control. Notice I'm not doing this. And it might be hard to do at first. So if you find you're doing that, just go ahead and hold it. So what you're doing is you're developing some agility with your thumb. In order to do this, you have to have a certain amount of pressure with your thumb so that the stick isn't flying all over the place. 
that will help you determine how much pressure you should be using with your thumb. If you are pinching too hard, it's not going to bounce. So you see that? Dribbling, bouncing with the thumb. That's exercise number two. Exercise number three is now doing full wrist rotation. So your thumb is going to hold it snugly, but now instead of your thumb moving the stick up and down, you're going to rotate your wrist. This is very, very important because this is the full motion you want to develop. You want to be able to play traditional grip like that so that when you're playing, you have a full range of motion like that and you don't get stuck chopping like that. So exercise number three palm rotation with stationary thumb. You can do it slow, you can do it fast, but what's important is you do full rotation to where the stick is pointing to the ceiling at the top. If you can only get there, it could be that your joints or your mobility is a little tight and you can work on strengthening that. It could also be that you're pointing the stick down, but the idea is stick to the ceiling. Okay, that's exercise number three. Here is exercise number four, and this is finger control and bouncing with the different fingers. So we already talked about with the thumb. So then what you wanna start doing is switching fingers for the control. Now we're gonna do first finger. And I'm just bouncing it. And then you try middle finger. all the while maintaining the right stick position on the drum. I'm going to go back to this. In my first video, I discussed how if you hold it traditional grip and your sticks are off balance like that, that's not good because it means your fingers, fingers are bending in. So as you're doing these bounces, make sure your sticks are in the right position. So back to middle finger. You want to practice them for a while individually, one at a time. Then you want to practice going back and forth. So you can try eight with each digit. One, two, three, switch, three, four, five, switch, switch, etc. You can speed it up and do fours. Etc. You can then go down to twos. And then ones. One, 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 one. So a lot of times people develop this to be showy or to do some tricks and that can be fun. But these really are helpful because when you're playing traditional grip these all come into play and they work together. You have full strokes, you have your wrist rotation, you have thumb control, you start incorporating your fingers when you're doing all these moves. So there you have it, you have exercises, you have finger push-ups, you have thumb only, you have wrist rotation. And then you have the finger bouncing. There you go. So there is more in-depth methods of motion that come along with this. I will get into those later when we talk about stone strokes and the molar stroke, especially how it applies to traditional grip.